So in your most recent call, you said the media coverage of the stress of the commercial real estate sector, it's been overblown. You say we're doing too much when it comes to us. Give us a sense. What's the state of the sector right now compared to how it was pre-pandemic? Let's start with the fundamentals, occupancies, rents, and uh, they are as healthy as they've ever been because they're a reflection of a strong economy. We're at uh, full employment, have had many years of solid employment growth, and that is reflected in demand for all kinds of office space. I'm sorry, all, uh, commercial real estate space, except for office, because of the effect of the pandemic. Even retail, shopping centers have made a big comeback. Apartment buildings are, are uh, very well occupied. And self-storage, hotels, uh, even to, to a very large extent, industrial warehouses, which have been the darling of the industry and had some overbuilding, are still performing very, very well. So the fundamentals are very healthy. It's really the... Um, interest rate and valuation part of the industry that's broken because of the okay. 525 basis point increase in interest rates at such a rapid pace. And that's what's causing all the trepidation. The reason I say it's overblown is because of the fact that uh, if you look at the banking system, 24% of total outstanding loans are in commercial real estate and 15% of those are in office buildings. And uh, the vast majority of properties that are within those loan portfolios are performing really well, uh, including okay. most of the office buildings. So you're saying 15 percent of all the commercial loans are office buildings. Correct. So the thing we're overblowing is the office building situation. But we're accurate when it comes to just the office buildings. Is that what you're saying? I mean, it's, it's certainly hard to get some workers back to work. We're saying uh, in the office, I should say. We're seeing a lot of companies entice, sometimes force workers to go back in. So long term, what does that mean for your business? What it means is that uh, the, the office sector certainly is going to experience more pain than any other sector in the next two to four years. There's no question about it. But multifamily and all the other property types are less likely to have this notion of huge distressed sales and right. huge fire sale discounts. In fact, you were talking about the funds that are being raised for distressed buying. We saw it in 2008, 2009. Right. We saw it in 2001, 2002. And they were extremely frustrated because the fire sale never came. Okay, I, I do have to ask you though, yeah. when it comes to commercial real estate, whether it's office buildings, apartments, anything else you're talking about, leverage is so important. So you mentioned the, the huge uh, basis point hike, 525 basis points, 5.25% on interest rates. Isn't that a long-term headwind that's gonna really hurt this sector? Because leverage is so important. It is absolutely important. It's the reason why transaction velocity is down about 50 to 60 percent across the industry. So we have it right. It, it is. It, well, we have it right in the sense that the industry is slowing down because of this. Right. But the notion of widespread distress leading to fire sales is what's overblown. All right. Let's get some other reporting. Yeah. You, you just touched on it. Wall Street firms reportedly are raising new funds to buy commercial real estate at lower prices. Reports are that some funds are even looking to raise funds so they can lend to commercial real estate property owners, presumably at higher rates. Overall, what does that mean for this industry and this sector? There is a credit crunch we're facing in the industry right now. Banks have pulled back for all the obvious reasons. Although I will say another thing that's overblown, you have a banking system that is so much better uh, capitalized today than it was in 08, 09. I mean, to the to, uh, magnitudes of significant improvement in liquidity. And therefore, my assessment has always been that overall U.S. banking system is much, much healthier than you would, uh, you would expect. But um, uh, besides that, uh, what I think is going to happen with these funds is that they're going to see some opportunities and, and funds are stepping in to fill the void where banks have basically stepped out of the market. Okay, that's loaning, though. That's what about loaning. buying? And I mean, if the, you even look at yeah. re, uh, residential real estate, which was red hot, you're seeing people start to slash those prices. Prices are adjusting. And to going back to your question, what's going to get us through this and what's the outlook for the industry? Prices have to adjust in a higher interest rate environment. The right. Fed has said interest rates aren't coming back down anytime soon. And the reality of the higher interest rates, which by the way, on a long-term basis, are normal interest rates. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to hear that. <laughs> Nobody, I don't think very, your true. clients want to hear that. I don't they think don't, you want to hear that. But it's an adjustment from right. where we were, of course, that's shocking the system. So it just sounds like you're saying that these, these funds that are raising money, they are gonna buy some of these properties yes. at lower prices. If you yes. had to give an estimate of which you think the discount would be, what would it be? Right now, we're seeing a 15 to 20 percent discount from the March 2022 high is what is taking to get multiple offers. Right. By the way, there is a wall of capital waiting to come into the industry. 
So when you're seeing those 15 to 25 percent discounts from the peak, there's multiple offers and they're overcoming the lack of financing availability right. by putting in more equity. OK, uh, that seems to be the number. I think it's going to go higher for some assets. 10 to 15 percent. Office probably is more like 40 to 60 percent. Wow.